46 here on page 248, and this is the you try it section. And this is going to be talking about what does it mean for something to be vacuously true. Okay, so the first thing is open up Dodgson's sentences, and I've done that over here. We're in Tarski's world, of course. Note that the first sentence says that every tetrahedron is large. Last time we talked about Aristotelian form, and this is in Aristotelian form here. Okay, so second, open Piano's world, and I've already done that. There's Piano's world, uh, and it says sentence one is clearly false in this world since the small tetrahedron is a counterexample to the universal claim. Okay, so let's take a look at that, and that's right. So it says all tets are large. There is a non-large one, so it's obviously going to be false. Why is that important? Okay, and then it talks about playing the game. And as I've noted, um, the game is maybe help, helpful for some. Um, I don't see it being all that helpful for the, some of the things that we're doing, so I'm going to skip that part. All right, and so third step here, delete this counterexample and verify that sentence one is now true. All right, so remember when you delete an object, you basically just kind of drag it off. Uh, let's see. Okay, drag it off like that, and it's gone. Okay, good. Well, let's verify that it's true. Okay, sentence one, is it true? Yeah, all tets are large. There's the only tet, and it's large. Okay, so step four, now open Pierce's world, and I've already done that, actually. That's on, if you see here, you can have multiple worlds open. You can actually do that over here the same way with sentences. Um, so I'm gonna just click over here on uh, Pierce's world, Okay, so again, it talks about the game. Then it says, verify that sentence one is again false, this time because there are three counterexamples. All right, so I just went ahead and um, gave truth values to all the sentences there, but first one we're talking about right now, all tests are large, and we see that all three of these tests are not large, so that's gonna make sentence one false, of course. It says delete all three counter examples and evaluate the claim. All right, so let's get rid of these counter examples right here that made that false previously. Now let's see. Now it's true. It says all tets are large. And it says the generalization is true because there are no counter examples to it. We got rid of those small tets. Uh, so it's what what we called a vacuously true generalization, since there are no objects that satisfy the antecedent, right? So that is, there are no tetrahedra at all, small, medium, or large. And it says, confirm that all of sentences one to three are vacuously true in the current world because they are all talking about tets. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back to that. And so since every one of these is talking about a tet, then they're all gonna be vacuously true. Okay, step six, two or more, sorry, two more vacuously true sentences are given in sentences four and five right here. However, these sentences are different in another respect from the other three. Each of the first three sentences could have been non-vacuously true in a world, but these latter two can only be true in worlds containing no tetrahedra. That is, they are inherently vacuous. That's because this says all tets are small and large, right? And that is obviously impossible for it to have both of those properties. And this says all tets are a cube, and that's obviously impossible too. So it wants you to get to notice the difference between these three, which could be true, and these two, which uh, are impossible to be true in this world. Okay. Uh, so step seven, it says added six generalization to the file that is vacuously true in Pierce's world, and that's the one that we're on right now, but non-vacuously true in Piano's world. In both cases, make sure you use the unmodified world. All right, so we're going to close this out, and we are not going to save it because we've made changes. We're going to close this out and not make changes, and then we're going to go ahead and open both of those back up so that we have sort of pure versions of each of those worlds. So I'm gonna go down here to, I'll start out with Piano's world first, because that's the one we dealt with first, and then I'm gonna open the next one, which is Purse's world. Go down here, Purse's world, right there. So again, what's it? what does it want us to do? In step seven, it says add a sixth generalization over here to the file that is vacuously true in Purse's world but non-vacuously true in Piano's world. 
Okay, so what would an example of that be? Well, let's see, we want it vacuously true in here and non-vacuously true in here. So let's pick something that is true, non-vacuously here, true vacuously here. And I'm thinking the best way to do that is to have something refer to, have the sentence refer to dodex over here since there are none, and then not so in the other world. So let's do this. Let's say over here that all dodex are small. And in this world, in Purse's world, that should work out to be true because it's vacuously true. All right, there are no dodex, so it's vacuously true. Now over here, all these dodex look small to me. So over here, that's gonna be true, but it's gonna be non-vacuously true. It's gonna be true in this world because there are dodex and all of them are small. So that illustrates the difference between something that is vacuously true and non-vacuously true using these two worlds.